Hi, I'm Adam. This is the Machine Tech video blog, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about screw threads. Screw threads are definitely one of the more familiar mechanical devices in the modern world. We use them to open plastic bottles or to assemble discount Swedish furniture, and they're used in practically every machine in some way or another. It's easy to take them for granted now, but screw threads were truly one of the great leaps forward in human engineering. And the push to create common standards for the different shapes and sizes of screw threads, as well as to invent the increasingly precise machine tools required to manufacture them, were major driving forces in the development of modern industry. So as a technician, or a mechanic, or a machinist, you'll definitely need to know a little bit about them. Essentially, a screw thread is a long wedge with a profile of some two-dimensional geometric shape, like a triangle, that's been wrapped tightly around a cylinder, or in the case of tapered threads, a cone, with each wrap of the wedge snug against the previous wrap. This path which the wedge follows is called a helix, and it can be found in many other common objects, like coil springs or, around this time of year, candy canes. Now, a classic tapered wedge uses the mechanical advantage of an inclined plane to convert force at its blunt end into force perpendicular to its inclined surface, which makes it much, much easier to split objects or to lift heavy objects. Screw threads work in essentially the same way, except that they convert rotational force into linear force along the axis of the cylinder. And this has all types of uses. They can be used for power transmission, precision measurement, making liquid tight seals. But the most common use of screw threads is as fasteners used to assemble components by driving an external thread into an internal thread and then wedging something between them. And there are a bewildering number of different threaded fasteners on the market for different applications. Socket head cap screws, button head screws, flat head screws, set screws, hex head bolts, swing bolts. By the way, the difference between screws and bolts is that screws are assembled directly into threaded holes, while bolts slip through clearance holes and are secured with threaded nuts on the other side. And there are plenty of different nuts to fit them. Hex nuts, lock nuts, flange nuts, and T-nuts to name a few. The type of thread that we're going to focus on in this video is the most common type of thread used in fasteners and other threaded parts the standard B thread, which has the profile of an equilateral triangle with 60 degrees between the sides of the thread. This is by no means the only type of thread, but those other threads will have to wait for their own video. If you look at an engineering drawing or a print of a simple threaded part, like a bolt, here's an example of what you're likely to see. All of the information required to manufacture the threads is specified in a note attached to the threaded portion of the part. The note usually contains at least four pieces of information, which always appear in the same order. The first is the major diameter of the thread. The major diameter is the largest diameter of a thread. It's measured over the tops of the crests of the thread. Now, although they're not mentioned in the thread specifications, threads do have other important dimensions. The smallest diameter of the thread is called the minor diameter, measured over the roots of the thread. And the pitch diameter is that diameter where the width of the threads and the width of the grooves between them are the same size. It can be tricky to measure the pitch diameter, but this dimension needs to be closely controlled if mating external and internal threads are going to fit correctly. The second piece of information is the number of threads per inch. This is dependent on how closely the threads are spaced as they're wrapped around the cylinder. You can measure the number of threads per inch simply by laying a ruler over the tops of the threads and counting how many crests there are in one inch. Our bolt has 20 threads per inch. This other bolt has the same major diameter, but there are fewer wraps of the thread in a one inch segment. In this case, there are only 13 threads per inch. 
If you divide one inch by the number of threads per inch, then you can figure out the distance between any two adjacent threads. This is called the thread's pitch. Another way of thinking about it is the distance along the length of the cylinder that it takes for the thread to make one full revolution. This is extremely useful information, not only because it ensures that mating threads will actually assemble with one another, but because you can control the linear distance that a threaded part moves just by rotating it a specific number of times. For example, our bolt has 20 threads per inch. So if I turn it 20 full revolutions, then it will advance one inch into the part. If I turn it 10 revolutions, which is half of 20, it will advance half an inch. And if I turn it just one revolution, it will advance one twentieth or 50 thousandths of an inch. Without going into it, this is the same principle used by a micrometer for precision measurement. The third piece of information is the thread series. In our case, we have UNF threads. The UN stands for unified, which is the designation for standard V threads with inch sizes used in the United States. The F stands for fine. Unified threads have standardized numbers of threads per inch for different major diameters. Fine threads have more threads per inch than coarse threads, which are specified with a C. For a half inch major diameter, like our bolt, the fine series has 20 threads per inch, while the coarse series has 13. As another example, for threads with a 3 quarter inch major diameter, it's 16 threads per inch for fine threads and 10 threads per inch for coarse threads. Unified fine and coarse are the most common thread series, but there are a few others as well. The fourth piece of information is the thread class. Thread class refers to the fit between mating threads and the tolerances or acceptable deviations in size used to manufacture them. Class I threads have the loosest fit, and they're designed for easy assembly and disassembly, even in the dirtiest conditions. Class II threads are considered general purpose threads, commonly used for fasteners like our bolt. And Class III threads have the tightest fit, where precision is the top priority. Now the A designates this thread as an external thread. The nut that fits our bolt would have a B to designate it as an internal thread. The four pieces of information we just discussed will be the only things listed on the vast majority of standard thread specifications, but you may occasionally see a couple of other pieces of information. For example, most threads are right-hand threads, meaning that they're made so that turning apart clockwise advances it into its mating thread. Typically, bolts and nuts tighten against one another when you turn them clockwise. You know, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. But if you see an LH in the thread specification after the thread class, then this means that the threads are wrapped the opposite way, so that turning the part counterclockwise will advance it into its mating thread. These threads are called left-hand or reverse threads. They're usually used to keep rotating parts from coming loose during operation. Good examples are the pedals on a bicycle, which have right-hand threads on one side and left-hand threads on the other, so the pedal on one side doesn't come flying off while you're riding your bike. This is all fine for inch threads, but most of the rest of the world is on the metric system. Standard metric V-threads are physically similar to unified threads, but they're specified a little differently. In this example, we have an M10 by 1.5 thread. Not surprisingly, the M designates this as a metric thread, and the 10 is the major diameter of the thread in millimeters. So far, so good. But unlike the specification for unified threads, which indicates the number of threads per inch, the specification for metric threads does not provide the number of threads per centimeter or millimeter. It actually just states the pitch of the threads outright. So the pitch of this thread is 1.5 millimeters. Finally, although there is a system of numbers and letters for designating tolerance and class of fit for metric threads, honestly, it's a little too complicated to give an in-depth explanation here. And in any case, it's kind of unusual to see it on a print. Well, there's your basic introduction to screw threads, their operating principle, their uses, their characteristics, and how they're specified on a print. And that's it for today from the Machine Tech video blog. I hope you learned something.